just um, just past half past eleven, so let's uh, begin our, our worship today. Uh, I'll be uh, presiding, as, as you can see, and also some reading. Um, David is doing a reading today from uh, Luke 23, 26 to 43. And Emmanuel is uh, on the Lord's table, but he's still on the bus here. He just uh, text that says the bus was a bit late. And uh, preaching is our brother Nick, so we look forward to, to hearing from him as well. Uh, next Sunday is presenting in Simeon, and song leading in Simeon as well. And he'll also be doing a uh, sing with Simeon next week, okay? Which I think is, is the last one for this year, is it? Uh, so that's the third there's, one? There's one next one. There's one, one next one. one, okay. And then you take a break after that? or It's most likely going to be just correction of songs. Correction of songs. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Um, so look forward to that. Um, <clears throat> reader is Robert for next week, and Lord's Table is David uh, next week as well. Uh, I'll announce the other things after the service as well. But please remember to switch off your tech. All right, and remember the cry rooms there if the children are upset. Um, try and keep the noise level down as, as much as we can. Uh, please remember to, to clean the toilets if you've been to them as well. Uh, and supervise, supervise your children. Okay, that'd be good. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, I don't think that we'll have any visitors here, but um, it's good to have uh, everyone here today. And some new faces as well that came in recently into the congregation, so welcome to you as well. And to AG from Singapore? Malaysia. Malaysia? <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> um, and uh, so AG, he came to our midweek class. It's good to get to know him and learn about his, a bit of his, his, his history as well. So if you can get a chance to uh, speak with him afterwards, that'd be good. Okay. Um, Let's begin our worship. I just noticed that this song from last week was the same number as we're going to have today, the same number we started. So I didn't bother changing it, I just, just <laughs> leave it. Because uh, I, I, I really like this song. So, um, and afterwards, let's stand and uh, remain standing for the closing, uh, for the opening prayer, which I'll be. Okay, let's sing together. 111. Can we that love the Lord and let the joys be known?
let's bow our heads in prayer. We thank you, O Lord, that you have brought us into your family, that you have forgiven us of our sins, that we can approach you, Father, in confidence, knowing that we've been cleansed, and we stand before you righteous in your sight because of what Jesus, our Lord and Master, has done for us. We pray, Father, that we'll ever be thankful as we come around the table today to remember what Jesus did for us, Father, in his sacrifice, and we pray that you'll richly bless us as we uh, share that wonderful life with him and share together in worship t today as we offer you our thanks and praise. We, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Be seated, please. Psalm 141. One more one. This song's a little more, it's a little slower, a little more con to contemplate a little bit more on the words. Uh, I love that first song, it's a, it's a real marching song. Uh, we're in a battle. And we are full of confidence that we have won the victory in Christ, already won it. Uh, this one is a, a direct prayer to, to God himself. And for, that's why we're here today, is to worship our Father in heaven. So let's make this appeal to him through this song. Father of mercies,
tennis part, but I should be learning to do the chord of the you know, melody part, especially if you're presenting. Our reading for today uh, is Luke chapter 23, uh, verse 26 to 43, and I'll ask David to come up and give us that reading. Okay. Luke 23, reading from verse 26. And as they, led them, as they led him away, they laid hold on one Simon, the Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, and also the wailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and the paths which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done on the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with him, with them, derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering him, rebuke him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Thank you, David. Our song before we have the day of the Lord's Supper is number 454. 454. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, which is the answer to the question of what can wash away my sin? Uh, it's kind of like when you're singing this, think of the question and then give the answer. Okay, powerfully. Uh, so let's all stand together and sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Love the love. 
understood that he was saved by grace and nothing more, nothing less than that. And he never relied on his works or anything that he did for his salvation. And that's why he says, oh precious, how precious is the flow. The man is now going to come and tell us about that flow of blood that saves us. Good morning, uh, First, I want to apologize for coming a few minutes late. It's, I'm not going to give any excuse, but it can be very tricky if you have to leave your home and not 30 minutes before worship, and uh, you have to come on the bus, which you really don't have control over. Um, deeply sorry about that, and I do apologize. Yeah, it is that moment again when we remember the one who paid the price for our redemption. If you had followed the read, reading this morning very well, it has actually prepared our mind for this feast because it's telling us about what Christ passed through for you and I. Let's visualize it. A man is going to be killed. A man is going to be crucified and was made to carry his own cross. For a long distance. Let's look at, you know, the mental stress. Because the accounts of the Bible makes it clear for us, I mean to us, that it was not an easy task for Jesus. He came purposely for that mission. He knew what he was here for, right from the day he came into the world. But because he did not come as a supernatural being. He came in human flesh, according to the Bible. Galatians chapter, chapter 4, verses 4 and 5 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive adoption as sons. Now, the major point that I want us to focus on here was that Jesus Christ was born of a woman. Even though we know his status as the son of God, but he came in the most humble way that anyone could, you know, I mean, just like everyone of us, coming, coming through a woman, coming in human flesh. And that was why shortly before the event uh, that um, David read in the Bible a few minutes ago, in Luke chapter 22, verses uh, 39 through 34, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. 
Brethren, let us look at this moment. It is when when somebody is suicidal, you hear, I mean, you you you, you want to die, it is considered to be a mental health issue. Every normal human being, regardless of how old they are, when they hear of death, they are scared, they are afraid. It is the normal reaction that everyone would naturally have. And there is this man, Jesus Christ. He knew the will of God. He knew his mission before coming into the world. But when that moment approached, he went back to God. He probably doubted, could this be the will of my father for me? That I should die in this cruel manner. Not for a sin that I have committed, but for the sin of others. So this is painting a picture of what Christ went through. It was not easy for him, but he had to go through that because of you and I. And because he know that woman can be very forgetful, he instituted this feast as a memorial that every time when we are gathered like this, we should look back, we should reflect on the price that he paid for us to be redeemed. And when we do that, we are proclaiming his death until he comes back. And by proclaiming his death, we are talking about what he died for. He died for our sins. His blood just as we sank, washed away our sins. Make us pure. But we read we, we this should also tell us that we need to continue to strive to remain pure till it comes back. And not be tempted or be pushed into going back to who we were before we had contact with the blood of Christ in the water of baptism. <coughs> the feast consists of two items, the first being the unleavened bread, which stands for his body that was nailed to the cross. He prayed over it and shared with his disciples, which are the likewise brethren. Our gracious, merciful, and loving Father, our hearts are filled with joy unto you and even gratitude this hour for the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf. We recognize the fact that we were unworthy even when he paid this price for us and through that sacrifice that he made we have been reconciled unto you we have been redeemed and we have the hope of eternal life we are here in your presence we have, we have the boldness to call you our father and we are not ashamed of being called your sons Thank you for this great privilege that we have through Christ, and we pray that you please accept our thanks. As we remember his death, we pray that you continue to give us the needed strength to be more determined to remain faithful unto you till we take our last breath. We pray that you continue to help us to keep ourselves pure and holy and abstain from all fleshly lust and be in such condition 
that when that comes, or Christ comes, we shall be able to reign with you eternally. Sanctify this bread, O Lord, and sanctify every soul that shall partake of it as well, for we have prayed in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. sanctify every soul that shall partake of it, and as, as, as we drink, help us to examine ourselves, O Lord, and then drink. Help us to continue to renew our covenant, to remain faithful, committed, and dedicated to your cause for the rest of our lives. And may you continue to give us the strength and the courage that is required to do this. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. around the table today. Before Nick comes up to give us his lesson, uh, let's sing 544. I thought this might be quite good to come right behind the Lord's Supper, uh, <clears throat> being reminded that uh, the blood of Christ redeems us. Let's stand together and sing 544. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the
um, especially when uh, Nick's up preaching, because we need a little bit of quiet to hear what he has to say. Okay, thank you. today and uh, came across another uh, lesson that I'd given a few years back. Uh, since that lesson, uh, since I gave that lesson originally, we've had COVID, we've had uh, Russians invading Ukraine, we've had the Hamas-Israeli conflict in Gaza and various other horrible things happening in life. So it seemed like it was actually fitting to resurrect the, this lesson and again. And I'm sure you're familiar with uh, various phrases which describe people who are not very clever, really. Phrases like, he's slow on the uptake, or she's not quite the full shilling, or he's a sandwich short of a picnic, or she's knitting with only one needle, he's a pallet short of a load, or her elevator doesn't go all the way to the top, He's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And this is my personal favourite, although it's quite nasty. The wheel is spinning, but the hamster is dead. A more perhaps common one we get is the light is on, but no one's home. There are many, many more, and I'm sure you get the picture. We all know that the Bible tells us that uh, only the fool, it's only the fool who denies the existence of God. But in this modern world, enlightened, some would tell us, those who deny God's existence are often highly intelligent, very well-educated people. Now that doesn't mean that the Bible is wrong, it is the word of God and is therefore always right. Man, on the other hand, is fallible. And even the greatest human geniuses are wrong sometimes. The Bible is actually saying that the evidence is clear to all and the denying the existence of God is a foolish conclusion, regardless of how well-educated you are. Sadly, for those of us who do acknowledge God's existence, it's often some of us that give atheists fuel for their fire. Some of the things that have been done in the name of God, allegedly, or in the name of Christianity, over the years have been horrendous, going back a few hundred years of the Crusades. Sounds like it was a noble cause when you say it that way, but it was more about forcing people to accept Christianity than gently persuading them to do so. Or the Spanish Inquisition, which was supposed to prevent heretical teaching, but was more about torture and punishment than correction and forgiveness. And when people see those who claim to be God's children acting in such ways, is it any wonder they want nothing to do with Christianity? And it's true of other religions too that espouse uh, some kind of uh, supreme being uh, as, their, as their guide. In Galatians, we see Paul reminding the recipients and readers of that letter that Christianity is not about forcing people to do things. Judaizers were trying to force people to accept Judaism before accepting Christ. And some of the Galatians must have been falling for it because Paul was saying how surprised he was that they were leaving what he had taught them behind. And he reinforces that Christ's sacrifice for sin was all sufficient for Gentile believers to become Christians. Jesus had died to remove any and all barriers so that anyone, both Jew and non-Jew, could become a follower of Christ by accepting the grace of Christ, their faith, as Paul says in his Ephesian letter. And Paul knew all too well what misguided religious zeal could lead to. He had been the epitome of Jewishness to the extent that before his own conversion, he actively pursued, persecuted and punished the followers of Jesus. After his conversion, he was still zealous for the truth to be proclaimed, but he was no longer misguided. And he didn't turn his former outrage at the followers of Jesus into outrage against their Jewish persecutors. On the contrary, 
He embraced the concept of love. He didn't turn from murderous intent against Christians to murderous intent against Jews. He embraced the concept of love as proclaimed by Jesus. We can see this in Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision carries any weight. The only thing that matters is faith working through love. And also verses 13 and 14 of the same chapter. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity to indulge your flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law can be summed up in a single commandment. Namely, you must love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus himself said in John 13, 35, everyone will know by this that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. But Jesus also said in Matthew 5, 43 to 44, you have heard it said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. It's clear from the teachings of Jesus and the changes in Paul once he became a Christian that Christianity was never intended to be something that is fought on a physical battleground. We are involved in a battle, but Paul points out in Ephesians 6 that it is a spiritual battle that we need to be prepared for. And one of our most powerful weapons, ironically, is love. So when the world around us sees so-called Christians spouting messages of hate or committing acts of violence and claiming to do it in the name of Jesus, is it any wonder they turn away from God and deny he exists? God has always wanted his people to bring light to a world in darkness. Israel was supposed to bring light to the world it found itself in. Isaiah 49, 6 says, I will make you a light to the nations so you can bring my deliverance to the remote regions of the earth. This was spoken to Israel and therefore had an application for them. But it was also a messianic prophecy. And in John 8, 12, we read, Then Jesus spoke out again, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But Jesus also said this in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, you are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so that they can see your good deeds and give honor to your Father in heaven. If Jesus is the light of the world, and his followers are also the light of the world, something has to have happened for both to be true. And in Galatians 2.20, Paul says this, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So the life I now live in the body, I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That is how the followers of Jesus become the light of the world. Jesus himself lives in them. And that is why Paul, the Christian, was able to preach peace, forgiveness, and love, rather than persecution, vengeance, and hatred of his former life. He now had Christ living within him and was the light of the world by the power of Christ. And the same can and should be true of us. As soon as we are immersed into Christ and receive the indwelling Holy Spirit, Jesus takes up residence and we become the light of the world, just as Paul did, and just as Jesus said his followers would. But if we quench, if we quench the Spirit, and we can, but First Thessalonians 5, 19 says, 19 says we are not to do. If we do quench the Spirit, and as Revelation 2.5 says, Jesus will remove the last stand. In other words, he will turn the light off. Furthermore, there are some who will claim to belong to Jesus, but in truth they don't. Matthew 7.21-23 says that it's not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven 
On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and do many powerful deeds? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus had warned of false prophets getting in amongst his people like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Just like the Judaizers that Paul was warning the Galatians about. And just like many then through the years who have committed atrocities in the name of the religion and claimed to be Christians. And dare I say, like many who have compromised the clear teachings of Jesus with the popular secular thinking of the moment. People who appear to be the light of the world, but who have never fully allowed Jesus into their lives and into their hearts. People of whom it truly could be said that the light is on, but no one is home. Some may do these things to receive the, the praise of their fellow man, and if so, as Jesus says a few times in Matthew 6, they already have the reward. And they will be the ones who hear, go away. I never knew you. By way of contrast, in Romans 12, 2, Paul says that we are not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that the will of God is done. Just as it is foolish to suggest that there is no God, it is also foolish to think we belong to Jesus if we do not embrace his teachings and fail to do those good works God has prepared for us to do. It is also foolish to be doing those good works just to make a name for ourselves. If that is what we are doing, then we can be assured that we do not have Jesus living in us. In stark contrast, we ought to take the message of Jesus to a world that is in ever-increasing darkness. And we ought to be doing so in love humbly serving all and giving God the glory. Christianity often gets a bad name due to wolves in sheep's clothing, people who appear to have the light on, but in truth, no one is home. But let us hope and pray that is never said of us. Instead, may we strive to bring light to a darkened world so that people can see that the light is on and Jesus is home. the gospel. <clears throat> uh, will you not tell it today? Um, if we decide, well, I'm not going to tell it today, you probably say something tomorrow and the day after that. So it is a, it is a decision that we have to make and, and uh, just begin to do it, to look for opportunities to share uh, our love with others uh, and our love for Jesus as well uh, and to show them uh, why it's good to believe in Christ and all the benefits that come from it. Let's uh, stand together and sing 73 and remain standing where Michael leads us in our closing prayer. If the name of the Savior is precious to you, this care has been constant and tender.
Chaitanya Most High God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Before we started today's service, we committed it to your care. And it is by your grace that it has been a successful end. We thank you for the many blessings you bestow on us. We thank you for the many things that you do for us, the knowns and the unknowns. We thank you for once again that it is known that it is not by our words. It is not about how we do things, but it's all by just the grace of you, O oh God. <clears throat> We're thankful unto you that even as sinners as we are, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, came to die for our sins. We're thankful unto you that in this purpose well, you continue to have mercy and to show mercy for the good and the bad. Heaven Father, we thank you and it's our prayer that even as much as this world is in a deplorable state, it's our prayer that you give us the strength to rise above all of that. May we be the light of this world. May we be the salt of this world. And may you continue to give us the strength to do that. There are many things that are going on. There are so many unbelievers. But through our works, may we show them. May we tell them of your wonderful works. We believe and trust in you, O oh God, and even times we get weak. But even so, we, we plead with you to give us the strength to be strong again, to do what you will, because we are imperfect. We commit all those who for various reasons were not able to join us today into your hands, especially those who are unwell. As I pray that you continue to stretch forth your healing hands on them, so that the next time when we meet, they shall join us and we will present this worship to you, O oh God. It's our prayer that, Father, you continue to bless the children amongst us. Give them the strength for them to understand your word, believe in your word, live by your word, so that people will see them and give glory to your name because of how you've projected them. As we are about to depart, is our prayer that you continue to touch each and every one of us. You continue to touch our footsteps. You continue to touch any activities we are back on in the course of the week. And may our presence everywhere be felt, knowing that we are living in your words. And that when you bless us again and we meet again, we shall continue to praise your name. In all things, Father, it is our prayer that you continue to mold us, you continue to protect us, you continue to stay ahead of us in all that we do. Please, this prayer we present to you in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Just uh, have some announcements before we finish up and have our cup of tea. Just remember our sick um, and those who are housebound uh, members who can't make it to, to services very often, particularly um, those who live further away. We ask that you'd also think of Robert at this time, and uh, Karen. Uh, Robert had a very good operation uh, to remove his gallbladder, and he's recovering at home at this time. Uh, so let's remember him and his family in our prayers. Uh, cleaning for next week is Michael. Uh, Teas, if they're here, it's going to be Robert and Karen. We can easily uh, change that if necessary. Uh, keep an eye on the notice board for any any uh, upcoming events that uh, may be um, coming up soon. For I think it's Castle Milk's turn to do the the um, East Coast Bride devotionals. Sounds about that. East Coast, East Coast Bride devotionals at Castle Milk. 
uh, November, November uh, Saturday the 25th of November at 7pm. Uh, also keep an eye on your emails for any announcements from, from the church. Uh, I think there was one special announcement this week for a couple that came here long before I ever came here as well, a long time ago, uh, from New Zealand. They <coughs> emigrated to New Zealand and married over there. And they're coming over in August uh, 24th, um, sorry, August 24, <laughs> for four weeks. And if anybody would be kind enough to uh, give them accommodation, um, they say they're a very quiet couple and they'll be out every day. So you won't see much of them. So if you're able to uh, think, uh, accommodate them, then start thinking about it. That'd be good. And we can get in touch with them later. Uh, thanks to Colin for being our video recording man again. Appreciate that. Um, I'm sure everybody who's watching appreciates it as well. Um, I think that's all the announcements I have. Now, I have been asking people to fill out these forms if they're kind of new to the congregation and what their, what their background is and their intentions are. And I think some of them have got, we know Olive, who's uh, an Indian girl. Uh, is she here today, Olive? I don't think so. Uh, very, very nice uh, person. And so uh, good to uh, know her and uh, her background, she was in the Lutheran Church in India for, for many years, so we were having uh, good discussions with her. Uh, and also Janet, got you here as well. Um, so if anybody doesn't know Janet, we know you now, okay, you've been here a week well. And uh, I think you lost your wallet in the bus today, did you, or something? So let's uh, keep her in our prayers as well. Not her wallet, but her. <laughs> okay. I hope, it, hope it's returned to you. It often does get returned to you. The bus, the bus people are good. Um, all right. Uh, so Esther, is she here today? Esther, okay. And um, your husband is Samuel. So if you want to stand up, just say hello. We can all see you. <laughs> uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, okay. And let's see now. You're from Ghana as well. Okay, excellent. <coughs> so welcome to the congregation. Um, now, an EG from Malaysia, I pronounced him this morning. Uh, he's nearly as tall as I am, believe it or not. So. So I always thought people have to look up to me, but I <laughs> don't have to do that so much. Uh, so welcome to you as well. And uh, Samuel Agaya. Samuel? Okay, you stand up, Samuel. Are you the same person? Okay. So, so it says to you, your wife is Esther, is that right? You both filled in the form. Excellent. I wonder why. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to you, and what we'll do is we'll give these over to Kevin at some point to, uh, next time we re renew the directory. Um, and also, um, if you can, you know, if you, if you do want to place membership here, just let us know. Some of you have said that, some of you haven't filled that bit in. So, but there's plenty of time to do that, no problem. You are members here anyway, but it's just nice to know officially uh, that you're a member here. Um, okay, I think that's everything I have, so enjoy one another's fellowship and also some refreshments. Thank you. Thank you.